Okay, this is an introduction to solving ordinary differential equations using Python. We'll call these rate equations here. So rate equations look like the following, dy dt equals some function of y and t, where this f of y t will be some equation <coughs> that depends on y and maybe some constants and optionally time. So it's important to realize that whatever equation is here doesn't have to have time in it and doesn't have to have y in it. You can always have f of y t equal a constant. But the idea is that it's written like this so that it's a generic form that covers uh, the cases of possible interest for an ordinary differential equation. So here y is the dependent variable and it's a function of t and that's our goal. <clears throat> this equation means that we're given, because we have the function y, f of y t, we're given the rate dy dt, we have that. What we want to know is y is a function of time. And so we solve that by integrating using an ordinary differential equation solver. And the result will be y is a function of time. Now if we solve this, solve this analytically, <clears throat> then we'll get an analytic function for y of t. In uh, Python, when we solve it numerically, we're going to specify an array of times that we want the solution at. And the result will be uh, y, an array of y at those corresponding times. So we won't know the function everywhere, we'll know it at particular discrete points. And that's often sufficient. And so the, the result isn't a single number, it's an array of numbers, and we often want to plot that uh, array, <coughs> array up. <coughs> so in addition to the rate equation, we also need an initial condition, uh, the initial value of y, and this is because uh, when we uh, solve these problems we always have a constant of integration <clears throat> and so we want to know the initial value that'll allow us to uh, specify and march the solution along in time okay so an example is radioactive decay dc dt is minus c over tau where tau is a decay time constant that we would specify <clears throat> in this case we have an exact solution and this can be solved by separating and integrating. So if we put dc over c equals minus dt over tau and integrate both sides, we get ln c equals minus t, tau, t over tau plus a constant. And if you take the log exponential of both sides <clears throat> and then evaluate for the constant, when t is 0, c is c0, you get this expression. And uh, this is convenient because we can then compare this an analytic solution to the numerical solution that we get from Python or, or another method. <clears throat> so uh, ODE int is the Python function. And before we try it out, uh, go ahead and see, before we teach, discuss how to use it in detail, go ahead and just try to solve an ODE using it, like the ODE on the previous slide. So you'll need the boilerplate from scipy.integrate import ODE int, <coughs> and then see if you can use ODE int. And in doing that, you'll want to think about what arguments the function will need. What does ODE int need? What's it going to return? If you need to define a function, what form will it have? And um, what are you going to get as an answer? And you can also consider different approaches that we used earlier in Excel. You can consider how the explicit Euler method works, etc. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and <clears throat> give it a try. Okay, so <clears throat> to solve this using ODE int, we solve the following. We take the following five steps. So first, we define the function, the right-hand side function, f of y t. In this case, y is c, and we would write def uh, uh, right-hand side function of c comma t. Uh, number two, we set the desired solution times. These will be the times that we want the solution at. Third step is to set the initial condition, and the fourth step is to call ODE int like so. So we go ODE int, we pass in the name of the function we defined, the initial condition, the list of times we want the solution at, and ODE int returns an array of concentrations at the corresponding times. Okay, and then number five, we plot up the results. So let's go ahead and solve this with tau is one, c zero is one, and t end is five. <clears throat> so here we have the boilerplate from scipy.integrate import ODE int, as well as numpy and matplotlib. So step one, define the function def 
right hand side function that's what I call I'll call it <coughs> CNT <coughs> return minus C over tau and we'll set tau as one and so it's important that you do C comma T because that's what ODE and is going to assume when it calls your right hand side function so you need to have the variable first and then the time and in this case you can see we don't actually use the time but it needs to be there because that's how ODE and is going to call it then we set some times to get the solution at so T is np.lin space go from 0 to 5 with a thousand points <clears throat> the initial condition C0 is 1 solve the problem C is ODE int the name of the function right hand side function the initial condition and the times that we're solving it at again remember that this T here is this array which is a different variable than this array <coughs> this variable in our right hand side function they share the same name but they're in different scopes and so when we pass in T it will have the same variable as this but we could call this anything we want we could call this times if we wanted to we could call this times and then number five now that we have the solution c is the array and time corresponding times we can plot it up so plt dot plot t comma c and then we can look at it oops times and we get the expected profile <coughs> so step six is does it make sense and it does as the concentration the analytic solution you can compare it to the analytic solution times comma c0 times np.exp uh, minus times over tau which is 1.0 and we get identical results so it makes sense from that point of view <coughs> it also makes sense because uh, the slope <coughs> is negative the rate is always negative so this you can see our slope is always negative and as C gets smaller the magnitude of the slope gets smaller so less steep when C is smaller and more steep when C is bigger so we're happy with it okay so there's a quick example let's go ahead and try another one so practice this one dvdt is minus g is g minus cv squared <coughs> for g is 9.81 C is 1 v0 zero, 0 solved to t is 2. so this would represent uh, for example the velocity of a water droplet falling in air it starts with no velocity it's uh, dv dt is its acceleration and has forces acting on it gravitational acceleration and a drag uh, drag and these oppose each other and uh, <clears throat> at the very beginning there's no velocity so the rate is as high as it can be g and then as the velocity starts to increase this term competes with gravity and so the the acceleration will slow down and then at some point these become equal to each other and we expect there to be no change in velocity and we call that the terminal velocity so that's kind of the physical setup so go ahead and pause the video and try to work this problem using ODE int and then we'll do it together okay <clears throat> so here step one define the function right hand side function v comma t return g minus c v squared and g is 9.81 and c is 1 notice you don't have to go in order I usually will do the main actor and then fill in the supporting cast after that then we can put the initial condition the list of times we want p dot win space will go from zero to two with a thousand points <coughs> solve the problem v is ode int we'll go from uh, the right hand side function with v zero and the times and then plot it up plt dot plot times comma v and we get this behavior that we described before we hit this terminal velocity and so those are the main steps okay <clears throat> let's see what to do if we have <coughs> multiple rate equations in multiple variables so this is similar to what we did in f solve where we might have dv dt is g minus cv squared but we also want to solve for the position of the droplet 
versus um, time. dx dt is equal to simply the velocity. So here we have two rate equations in two variables, v and x. And both v and x are functions of time. So let's go ahead and solve these. When we did this in F solve, we, re we, <coughs> get, we uh, treated this as a vector of unknowns and re returned a vector of functions. And here we'll do the same thing. We'll pass in a vector of variables and return a vector of rates. And we'll provide a vector of initial conditions. So let's go ahead and show how this is done. We'll use c, again, c, we'll let c equal 1, g is 9.81, tn is 2, and the initial condition for both v and x will be 0, but you can change those as you like. So define the function. So def right hand side function. Now I'm going to call my unknown vector uh, vx and t, <coughs> vx just because it makes sense. The vector holds v and x. Then for convenience, I'll recover the variables. So v is vx 0 and x is vx1 and this isn't required you could just work with the array elements but it's convenient for writing your rate equations to have the variables directly so then we have g is 9.81 and c is 1 <coughs> and then we can write dv dt is g minus cv squared dx dt is uh, v and then return np dot array um, dv dt and dx dt so we pass in an array of variables, vx, and we return an array of rates, dv dt and dx dt. It's important that the order be the same. So if we pass in v and x and v comes first, then the rate equation for v needs to come first, dv dt, and then dx dt. And then we set some times. So t is np.len space from 0 to 2 with 1,000 points. And then we can set an initial condition, so we need an array np vx0 is np dot array <coughs> 0, 0. And um, <coughs> again, our initial condition has the same order as these variables as the rates, so everything's consistent. Then we solve the problem vx equals ode int, the right hand side function where we have <coughs> then the initial condition and the times. Now notice that this vx isn't like this one. Here vx is a, an array with just two values at the current time. Here vx is going to be a matrix of solutions. So let's change this thousand to be ten, uh, ten maybe. And when we solve this, whoops, when we solve this we'll print vx <clears throat> so you get a matrix, and the first column of the matrix are v at all the times. There's 10 times, and the second column is x at all the times. So you can recover the v and the x arrays if you want to, as v is just vx. All the columns, sorry, all the rows of the zeroth column, and x is vx, everything common one. So this colon means all of the zeroth column, vx. Anyway, this thing, colon comma zero is all of these, and colon comma one means all the rows of the one-th column. <clears throat> and then we can plot the answer. So plt dot plot t comma v and t comma x. And <clears throat> let's put some more points in there so it's nice and smooth. And that's the velocity like we had before, and the orange curve is the x positions. So when the velocity becomes constant, x becomes a straight line. And before that, x is increasing uh, as the particle accelerates. So it seems to make sense. Um, and dx dt is always positive. dv dt is also always positive, And so everything seems to be consistent with our equations. <coughs> OK, let's go ahead and do another example. Um, Here's a more complicated exercise. We won't work this one. I'll let you do this one on your own. This is a coal particle in a furnace, given the data and correlations down below. dt dt is ha, m, c sub p, etc. And um, this is just like the previous one-dimensional problem. We have one equation and one unknown. <coughs> 
you'll want to be careful with your units here. Everything here is in SI units except for the diameter of the particle in microns. And um, then you have some intermediate expressions in order to compute the final right-hand side function. Okay, and then um, let's see. And then we have <coughs> another exercise, um, chemical reaction, A plus B goes to C, and B plus C goes to D, and A, B, C, and D denote species concentrations. We have initial conditions for A, B, C, and D. We have um, the first reaction has a rate constant of 1, and the second reaction has a rate constant of 1.5, and each of the species have given a uh, rate equations right here. So we can solve for the concentrations and let's go ahead and um, maybe try that out just to rough it in for you. <coughs> so the first step, def right hand side function, our list of variables a, b, c, d and time and then we'll recover the variables a, b, c, d, 0, b, c, d, 3, 2, 1 and then we can go k1 is 1 and k2 is 1.5 and then we can write dA dt is minus k1 a b db dt is minus k1 times a times b minus k2 times b times c etc for the others dc dt fill it in and dd dt fill it in and then we would return the array of rates p dot array a D T D B D T D C D T D D D T and then we need initial condition A B C D zero is N P dot array uh, one one zero zero as given above <coughs> and then A B C D equals O D E int um, the function right hand side function the initial condition and the times and uh, that's it so you can go through this and get effectively the uh, results uh, using this approach